Guys, we've had 20 videos on the Pierce defense and you still don't know how to play against this H4 variation. Well, just like I told you when we covered the spike variation, this is something that you already know. You think you don't know it, but you do. And another thing that you should know about it is that there are two ways you could handle this H4, or I think they also call it the bayonet attack. And this is going to be very easy for you to understand if you already went over lesson number 70 and lesson number 73. If you're new to the channel, you just landed on this video, just know that we have an entire playlist with every variation that the white pieces could play against the PS defense. Now, with that said, let's get to it, guys. And let me explain why I'm saying that you already know how to do how to deal with this well it's very simple basically this h4 by itself is not dangerous at all like if i continue now with bishop g7 and they did h5 well i'm just going to take it and that's going to be a free pawn now i'm not concerned about the h file my king is not compromised to the king side if things get too ugly i could always go to the queen side and look if i activate the engine you're going to see that this is roughly equal and we should be fine now let me just put it back and tell you that if the white pieces are serious about this attack they need to insert bishop e2 now those of you who have been with me from the beginning you should know that the spike variation starts with bishop e2 bishop g7 and then g4 now some people instead of g4 they do h4 but even if they go straight h4 before they do h5 they need to insert bishop e2 and now we have the two options. Number one, we could play just like we played in the Austrian attack, right? In the Austrian attack, I recommended that you would play pawn to c5. And if you pay attention to it, this is now taking the form of the Sicilian defense dragon variation. And this is why I'm always saying that we should study different openings, even if we don't play them, because you never know when you could transpose, right? So the idea is simple. If they take now, we're going to go queen a5, just like in the Austrian, pin in the night and if they ignore it and they keep taking well thank you for the pawn now i have three pieces attacking that pin knight and it's going to be very comfortable to play this as the black pieces now of course they don't have to take on d6 the game that i have saved as reference is uh, they play bishop d2 and then after bishop d2 we simply pick up on c5 and i'm going to show you the remaining of the game because there are a few other ideas that you need to understand and guys it comes down to this. The reason why I want you to play systems like the Pierce, the Collie, the King's Indian Attack is because you don't need to memorize specific moves. You just need to know the main ideas. After Queen, F, uh, Queen C5, if they go H5 finally, you should know something that is at the back of my mind is that in this specific variation, it is okay to just take. Break my pawn structure is going to be fine. And then when they take on H5, I know not to take because I don't want to activate the rook. Now, I leave him with the bishop here doing nothing and I just continue to develop. Guys, again, if I show you the engine's evaluation, it is 0 0.00, so this is completely equal. And then after knight c6, then we just continue to play chess. So bishop e6, and like I told you before, if things get too ugly, you could always castle to the queen side. If for any reason you're concerned about your king, well, what about the white king? It's not gonna castle to this side, Castling to the queen side would be suicide because we have already lines open towards the king, so we should be fine. Now, um, if we go back in this actual game, when they do h5 and we take it, what, what they do instead is knight h3 and then knight c6. We just continue to develop bishop g4. Interesting move because we're trying to provoke that f3 move. And the idea is very simple. First, we're opening up that diagonal. We never know if it could be handy. But also, when the pawn goes to f3, these pieces are not putting pressure on h5 anymore. So now we just go to e6, offering the trade on e6, which if they accept it, then we're going to get doubled pawns, which we know could be a bad thing towards the end game. But doubled pawns in the center, guys, we should know by now they have benefits. And one of them is going to be a very good control over the center square. So this knight is not going to have anywhere to go. And, and so on. So in this game, they didn't take it right away. They went queen c1, then knight d4, getting active, bishop d3, bishop c4, take, take, and then after bishop e3, we got rook c8. Just activating our pieces, that king is still in the center. So queen d2, we go back, and then when they take us, we could again take with the queen, we could take with the pawn, but in this game, they chose 
and this is also what the engine recommends is f takes e6 and then just to show you a little bit more the next move that the black pieces did was knight d7 just trying to reroute the knight from here we're not doing anything important so we're looking for a better square for the knight and then after rook h5 finally getting the pawn back in this game and in the book that i recommended for the ps defense and by the way in the description of this video you can find all of my book recommendations including a book about the ps defense and even in there they recommend bishop takes c3 which is fine if you look at the uh, evaluation it's going to say better for the black pieces however the engine pointed out this move knight e5 which i made a note not to play what the book said but what the engine said and it's very nice because i'm hitting f3 with a very powerful fork but it's also not so easy to take care of it like if they did something like this defending it now i have this check discover attack on the knight and when they take it well I'm going to be taking with a fork, and this is really, really nice. And of course, they could do something else like um, king f2, but then after rook f8, not only am I putting more pressure, but if they do something like f4, first, I don't even have to worry about it. It's pinned, but I could even do something like knight g4 with a very nice fork, hitting c3. So this gets really, really comfortable, guys. Now, when I show this to my students, I'm not expecting them to memorize every single move. I just want them to know the main ideas. Number one, if I want to play like the Austrian attack, I'm going to do my c5 followed by um, queen a5. And after they take care of it, well, I'm going to take back. My queen is active. And finally, in this variation, when they do h5, it is okay to capture too. So this, these are the things that I have at the back of my mind. Now, if I go back, and I hope that this makes sense to you guys, um, in this variation, the only thing that you could do is going to be h5 and this is very interesting because here you could see how uh, i had to choose between what the engine considers to be the best move which is h5 actually if i go back here you could see the engine is saying do h5 right but in my case what i typically do is c5 because i feel more comfortable with this position i feel in my elements and this is to me more important than doing the best move that the engine recommends but at the end of the day it is going to be completely up to your style. So going back to this h5 variation, the main thing that should stand out is this g5 square that the white pieces could occupy. But guys, you're going to be just fine. Now, if they did something like bishop g5, for example, the only thing that we need to do from now on, the only ideas that you need to remember are what we learned on lesson number 70, how to deal with the 150 attack. The same thing that you saw Yasser doing against the spike variation, which is the move that we have talked about so much and that's going to be pawn to c6 very flexible multi-purpose we see it a lot in the peers the king's indian defense and basically you're going to see how after queen d2 the same plan to do the battery castle queen side well we give it the same treatment that we did with the 150 attack pawn to b5 expanding there telling them if you do go ahead with this plan i'm already on to you on the queen side so just to show you a little bit more let's say they do a3 I continue with knight b to d7. We should be more than familiar with this. Now, f3, we know what this is for. Um, a6, knight h3. And by the way, if they had done something like g4, nothing to be concerned with because, again, we're not castle. Back on lesson 70, the main piece of advice that I gave you guys is to delay castling because if you don't castle to that side, all of this pawn storm and this battery is pointless. What are they attacking, right? So after g4, you could do two things. You could ignore it. And if they take, then your knight takes back, isolated pawn, the knight is taking care of everything. Or you could um, take first and then continue with something like c5. And guys, there's nothing here. If they go queen side, I'm already on to them. I could do before, take, take. Now this knight, if it leaves, let's say it goes to b1, well, thank you for the pawn and the fork that is going to allow me to eliminate that bishop. Or if they did something like e5, I take and I'm still hitting the queen as well. So you could see how this is the other approach that you could use, and it's going to be at the end of the day, guys, it's going to come down to your style. My advice is that you get familiarized with both because you never know. Maybe you're playing in a tournament and you're playing someone who you already played against and you used the h5 variation. Maybe next time, just to surprise them, you want to do c5. So it you, you never know. Now, with that said, the only thing that I'm going to need from you guys is to let me know in the comments what variation you like the most because that's going to help me understand 
the kind of positions that you like the most, and I could use that information to direct our training, our lessons in the future. So with that said, I'm going to let you go, and I will see you on lesson number 148.